Hey guys, and welcome to this episode of the DJ Podcast. In this episode, I'm going to be going over the different playback modes of Serato Scratch Live. All right, so the first mode we have is Absolute Mode. And you'll see that we really don't get that many options with it. We can change whether it's 35 or, or <laughs> 33 or 45, sorry, and we can turn on Master Tempo. But really, that's about all we can do. And that's because Absolute Mode plays back at the same timing, speed, and position of the CDJ or turntable. So you can't use any of the in-software effects that change the track's position, like the sensor button or looping or anything, or the hotkeys. So you'll notice that as I move the, uh, I'm moving the platter on my CDJ back and forth, and it's following the exact same movement on Serato. And if I were to fast forward a little bit, you would see that it's following the exact absolute position that the CD player is at. So now the timing for the track in Serato is uh, one minute, one second, one frame, and it's the exact same on my CDJ. So that's absolute mode. It's good if you want to do sort of straight mixing or something that doesn't really have to do with a lot of the effects. The second one is relative mode, and that's sort of where things open up because this mode plays relative to the CDJ or turntable, not the absolute position. So this is really good for scratching or looping samples. If you have, you know, sort of a scratch sample pack and it's one file and it's sort of broken up into chunks, you can use loops and sort of the relative position to scratch. And this will allow you to use the, um, the cues here or the loop or the sensor button and that kind of thing. So let me show you now, if I move the uh, platter in, on my CDJ, it'll move here. And it just so happens that it's the same timing because it's um, it's the same that it was before. But you can see that I can jump at this point, and now if I move the platter, it'll still move because it's playing in rel relatively, but it's not the same timing on the CDJ as in Serato. And that's relative mode. Also, there is internal mode, which is the last mode. And this is n not, I mean, I wouldn't say it's terribly useful, uh, but it's it can do um, a few things. Now, when you're in internal mode, y software has complete control. So you can do really anything that Serato can handle. So you can do loops, you can do cues, you can do s the sensor button. And you can needle drop. And by needle drop, I mean you can just sort of pick any place in the track you want. It's all controlled internally in the software. And that's pretty much it. I mean, there are certain things to each mode that you may find useful. So, for example, internal mode is good if you need to do one deck mixing for any reason. So, let's say you have a CDJ that breaks down and you go, oh, no, what am I going to do? You can use internal mode as one of your decks. Or if you do a lot of scratching or a lot of looping, maybe you play some electro house or some or sort of just regular house music that you want a lot of loops, you can do that in internal mode. If you like a lot of cue point um, switching and editing, you can do it with relative mode. And it's also really great for scratching. And then finally, you have absolute mode, which really, if you just want sort of pure mixing and this sort of bread and butter of Serato, of it just being an amazing workhorse, you can use absolute mode. Hope you guys enjoyed this episode. It was a short one, but uh, I'm trying to do a little, the little shorter episodes to try and you know, get these out a little bit faster, go over some more basic things, more specific in each one. I think it'll be a good change. Once again, my name is Peter Morgan, and you can find me this and other episodes at thedjpodcast.com.